Solstice is back for 2022 with a bit of a shakeup this time around. The process of upgrading your gear is done a little bit differently. Solstice is a great time to farm for high stat armor with very specific stats, as I'll explain. So for those of you who don't have access to endgame content for whatever reason, you'll be able to get a high stat roll piece of armor in about 30 minutes with the ability to choose 20 of one stat and 10 of another at a minimum, which is excellent. There are three currencies in Solstice, Kindling, Silver Leaves, and Silver Ash. Kindling comes from event challenges. Every time you complete a challenge, you'll be given one kindling. There are 24 challenges, which means 24 kindling. Challenges are per class, not account-wide, although the seal and title are account-wide. This is so that anyone who wants the seal only needs to do one set of challenges, whereas if you want to play all classes and want all of the armor glows, you need to do all of the challenges on all of the classes. However, if you want to guild the title, you will need all of the glowing armor on all of the characters. Kindling is used to upgrade your candescent armor. For the first upgrade, you're going to need one, the second's two, and the final is three. Increasing the kindling on your armor does two things. One, it allows you to roll for higher stats, and two, once you fully kindle an armor piece, it's going to glow. This is how you get the glow effect on your armor this year. Kindling is only needed once per armor slot, so once you fully upgrade an armor piece, any repeat armor drops of that slot will already be fully kindled. This brings us to Silver Leaves and Silver Ash. Silver Leaves are turned into Silver Ash in the Bonfire Bash, which is the activity of the event. Silver leaves come from most activities in the game while wearing this year's armor. You cannot wear previous event armor, it's not going to work. You do not need to wear the full armor set in order to get leaves. At the moment, one piece will do, but as Ava says, more armor gives higher chances at more materials. I personally will just be keeping on a full set the entire time while I grind in this event. I also don't know if you can transmog this year's Solstice armor onto whatever you have right now and have it count. I'm just not sure yet. Here's a list of how many leaves come from each activity, give or take one leaf depending on how much armor you have or your luck. For example, people said that they could get five leaves from a match of Mayhem Crucible, others reported four, the Vanguard Ops playlist gives six, give or take one, Gambit gives four, and you can see the rest on your screen. Adept Nightfall gave seven, Wellspring was eight, Hero Nightfall gave eight or nine, I've been told GM Nightfall is 13-15, I've been told Duality is 15 as well, or in the 13-15 range, but I have not run it myself. However, the thing that I imagine a lot of people are going to be running to maximize their leaf gains is the investigation mission from the Witch Queen campaign, and this can be on normal mode. From start to finish, this mission takes about seven to nine minutes going somewhat quickly in a full set of Solstice armor. I got my runs down to about six to seven minutes on my Titan. This mission gives 14 or 15 leaves in full armor. Not only that, but you can get a checkpoint at the end of the mission if you happen to be in a group of people that you're playing with for even faster clears. This is definitely one of the, if not the best known method for farming silver leaves for the event at this time. While I think there's a small chance that Bungie will maybe stop the checkpoint shenanigans, I don't think the amount of leaves that you will get from this mission will change. If it does, check the description for any updates. The cap for silver leaves, by the way, is 100. So, when you have a bunch of silver leaves, you're going to take them into the Bonfire Bash. In this activity, you will hunt majors, grab the ball that they drop, and throw it into the bonfire. Periodically, Taken are going to show up and stop the ability to throw balls into the fire. You just got to kill them to resume the event. The event is either 8 minutes long or until you throw 20 balls into the bonfire, whichever comes first. Note that you can throw the balls from pretty far away and they will likely reach the fire. After 8 minutes or 20 balls, a boss is going to spawn that doesn't really appear to do anything special. It's pretty easy to kill. After the boss dies, you will receive 5 times the ash of how many balls you threw at the fire. So if your team threw 20 balls, then you are going to get 20 times 5 equals 100 silver ash. Your silver leaves will be consumed to be turned into this ash. So up to 20 leaves can be consumed at a time. 
The bonfire will also drop a whole bunch of goodies for you. Please note, you must be in solstice armor the entire time during the bonfire bash. You cannot switch your armor in the middle of it. It will not give you ashes at the end. You only need to wear one thing, but it needs to be on the whole time. So what do you do with silver ash? You use it to upgrade your candescent armor. First, like mentioned earlier, you're going to throw some kindling into your armor. Then, you will use 20 ash in order to upgrade the stats of the armor piece, which will then unlock the next tier of kindling and ash. Another 2 kindling and 40 ash will get you to the final tier, and 60 ash is required for that final upgrade along with 3 kindling. On this final tier, you are able to select which stat will roll with at least 20. You can combine this effect with a ghost mod that focuses armor with 10 of a selected stat, enabling you to focus your armor with really specific stats and amounts. For example, here's me getting a piece of armor with at least 20 resilience and at least 10 recovery with the ghost mod and my selection on the armor piece. So far, I've gotten stat rolls of 65 and 66. This is the main farm of the event. Easy to get high stat roll armor. In fact, you can get a high stat armor piece at a rate of about one piece every 30 minutes after you've upgraded a piece to its maximum Kindle, and here's how. Run the investigation mission two times. If you're able to use the checkpoint, this process will be even faster than if you don't. Each run takes about seven to eight minutes, so 15 to 20 minutes, give or take, for two clears and some loading screens, which will get you almost 30 leaves, assuming you have on all of the armor, which you probably should. Then, run Bonfire Bash, which will take about 8 to 10 minutes, and then fully upgrade an armor piece. And there you go. High stat armor farming. One thing to note, though. Once you fully upgrade an armor piece, you must get a new one in order to get a new high stat roll chance. You cannot reroll the same armor piece multiple times over. As for the event challenges, a lot of them simply require you to do... stuff. A good chunk of them requires you to do the bonfire bash, and then the rest consists of doing a little bit of everything. Hand cannon, shotgun, power weapon kills, killing other guardians, killing bosses, doing crucible matches, public events, patrols, etc. Here's some quick numbers for certain challenges. Heroic public event gets you 10% on Solstice Jubilee. Spark in the Dark requires five sever missions to complete. That's 20% per. Dares is 25% for Dare to Dream. Throne World Lost Sector and Heroic PE is 5% for In the Hot Seat. Wellspring is 10% on Normal Mode for the same challenge. Most of these challenges, not very hard to do, much like the average triumph in a season. Event challenges also give event tickets which I'll explain right now. When it comes to the upgraded event card, you do not need to purchase this to interact with Solstice or the Seals, Triumphs, Titles, or Gear in any way. The upgraded pass only consists of cosmetics. That's it. It is also where you use event tickets from event challenges. Event tickets are not used anywhere outside of the upgraded event pass as far as I'm aware. Next, we have a couple of guns to showcase, something new, a 120 RPM stasis hand cannon, and Compass Rose, a shotgun. In terms of a quick perk roll discussion, for something new, I'm looking for Stats for All or Feeding Frenzy with Headstone if I want to do any stasis stuff, but a perk roll that I found interesting was Wellspring and Demolitionist, giving you tons of ability energy every kill. Feeding Frenzy and Multi-Kill Clip is also okay. I'm not the most wild about it, but it's certainly fine. Compass Rose, on the other hand, the first row of main perks leaves a bit to be desired for PvE purposes. I'm not really gravitating towards anything. Quick Draw Snapshot with your suite of range perks and range masterwork is probably going to be appealing to some PvPers. Maybe even Adagio instead of Snapshot if you want to try that. PvE-wise, the second column has a lot of options. Incandescent, maybe Golden Tricorn, Trench Barrel, also an option. Finally, the Origin Trait Dream Work on these weapons is interesting. The perk is, once per reload, if you assist on a kill, your magazine partially reloads from reserves, potentially overflowing the magazine. So you hit something, someone else kills it a short time later, your magazine gets refilled or overflowed. Here's the thing. This perk is currently applying on all weapons. Not just Compass Rose, 
and not just something new. For example, I hit something with something new, and then I swap to, I don't know, Anarchy. My friend gets the kill, and now my Anarchy has 11 shots in it. That doesn't seem correct, as it will lead to catastrophic imbalances, enabling some truly ridiculous things. So I guess just take advantage while you can. On the off chance, on the very off chance that this is intended, uh, Traveler save us all, because this is chaos. That is your Solstice Guide for the year. Again, please check the description for any updates to the event. I'm sure there's going to be at least one. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.